My studio is blessed with northern light, lots of storage, and it's very serene and comfy. But my favorite part of the studio is my clutter of inspirational stuff. Seashells and coral and pottery shards, driftwood, feathers, leaves, pods, flotsam and jetsam. It's what informs my work. Some of my work examines my relationship to the natural world, memories of my childhood as a very shy little girl, unable to make friends. The woods and the beaches were my best friends, and they are the source of that inspirational clutter in my studio. This painting, Looking for the Limelight, represents a path towards self-confidence. I've always loved watercolor, and I use it in all of my work. This piece, Up in the Air, is a 40-inch square painting on canvas, by weaving together passages of ethereal color and whimsical marks, I'm remembering a tree with all the energy that gives it life, the air, the breeze, and the sky. Working without a plan, I never know what's ahead, so it's exciting to see a theme evolve. This painting, Room to Grow, actually did grow, from a simple watercolor to a many-layered mixed-media adventure. I love scratching through wet paint to reveal a bit of a past. Well, that's a bit like life, isn't it? I enjoy the challenge of switching from a complicated piece to something minimal. Here is a series titled Coasting. They are all pure watercolor on 28 by 20 inch paper. There's something so basic about water meeting sand, marvelous and consistent. Looking at these two paintings, I yearn for a day of beachcombing. It's both meditative and exciting for me. The sound of the surf relaxes, but the possibility of finding treasure is intense. This is coasting number two and coasting number three. This pair take me to a different coastal experience. Waves and sand compete for the upper hand on the left in coastal number four, while the rich blue of coastal number five on the right suggests that this water may run deep. As I mentioned earlier, the clutter in my studio is my inspiration. All of it is small stuff, little pieces of the big picture. I think a lot about why that's important to me, and I believe it's because I feel we are all very small in this world, but we're all made of the same stuff. There is life, or the footprint of life, in so many things around us. You just have to slow down and look. A stone has rich history that you can see traces of on its surface, and even a piece of weathered wood can seem alive. I love finding these things, forgotten and disregarded, and giving them a little attention. That concept of everything made of the same stuff led me to explore what that invisible stuff might look like. A series of 20 10-inch paintings on wood panels is the result. I call the series Particles. This particle is number eight. Something is going on. Something is alive in this space. There's a hint of humanity with the calligraphy and a hint of space in the ellipse. This is particle number 12, and I planned it specifically to invoke the transparency I see on the skin of my inner wrist. Looking deeper, I wonder what flows under my skin and yours. This is particle number 13. I see in it an organized space where a variety of life forms know where and how to exist in harmony. Lately, I've been thinking about what all humans have in common. The ability to feel compassion, lust, happiness, wonder. How might those attributes look? I call them alternate energy. This painting's title is Ignis Vitae, which is Latin for spark of life. This is Lumen Vitae, or glow of life. It's a visualization of that warm yearning we have for someone we love. It's 40 inches square, watercolor on canvas, enhanced with other materials such as oil stick. This is Vim Vitae, or life force. It's full of a variety of marks and traces, Although the colors are restrained, the moving parts within represent the determination we all share to live life to the fullest. Sometimes it takes very little to reveal how you're feeling. 
This mini painting, three inches tall, is the result of just three paint colors running together, yet I can't help seeing it as a full-fledged individual having a private moment. Watercolor on two inch by three inch Italian handmade paper. So I painted another and another until there were 50 of them, each alone in its own thoughts. I had no plan for these paintings, so they lived in a drawer in my studio for a while. But I was haunted by them. They seemed to be calling for attention. I decided to treat each one as an individual. I built 50 six inch square shadow boxes and mounted each painting so that it is floating in its own private space, caught in time like a collection of butterflies. I was determined to move on from the miniature series to very large work, hoping to be able to retain the spontaneity of flowing color over a big canvas. Three diptychs resulted, one of them keeps me company on the left, and my studio calls me back to work on the right. Mm -hmm.